Hi there and welcome back to the Pilot-Aware YouTube channel. In this masterclass we're going to look how to configure your Pilot-Aware. The information provided in this video should be used in conjunction with the information provided on the Pilot-Aware knowledge base available from the Pilot-Aware website, pilotaware.com. As you've seen in other videos, your Pilot-Aware unit connects to your iPad or smart device via Wi-Fi. To do this, you will need to log on to your Pilot-Aware Wi-Fi using your smart device. When you've done this, open a browser such as Safari or Chrome and type in 192.168.1.1 or paw.local and then hit return. When using the latest software, this will land you on the radar page. When there, Select Configure from the drop-down menu on the top left-hand corner. The first thing you need to do on the configuration page is to insert your HEX ID or ICAO code. Every aircraft has an ICAO code and you need to put this in so that your aircraft can be uniquely identified. If you don't know your ICAO code, this is easily obtained through the CAA website GINFO and putting in the last four digits of your registration. The next thing you need to insert is your flight ID. This can be anything, but normally it's your tail registration. Next, you need to install a group ID. This is useful if you want to associate yourself with a group of other pilots. This can be left as the default of Paul Group. Then, please identify your aircraft type. This can be chosen from the drop-down menu, and this helps to identify your aircraft when plotted on a screen. With the latest software, there is a new feature called the Aircraft Transmit Speed. This allows you to select the speed at which the Pilot Aware transmits its beacon. This can be stationary, or 10 knots, 20 knots, or 30 knots. Many users will choose the stall speed at which to start to transmit. This is a useful feature if you're on the ground at a busy airfield and don't want to transmit your location. However, you must remember that the beacon will not transmit until you reach the ground speed selected. The next configurable item is whether you want the ground station displayed on your electronic flight bag or radar screen. This can be enabled through the drop-down screen. Below the Display Ground Stations tab are the four boxes into which you install your license key. Please ensure you install this correctly. A common mistake is to confuse 0 with O, Oscar, and also confuse 8 with B. So check your license once you've put it in. In the next tab, you select whether you want to see bearing less targets. The drop-down menu gives you variable options depending on what kind of transponder you have fitted. If you have a Mode S transponder, we suggest you choose Mode S plus filter. If you're uncertain what a bearingless target is, or you want to know more information, please visit the YouTube channel and the video on Pilot Aware Rosetta before you make your selection. The approximate distance of a bearingless target is measured by the power received. In the next box you can determine what that power should be. The absolute distance cannot be measured, but we use the rate of change of power to determine whether it is coming towards you or going away. The strength of this power is selectable via the drop-down menu. We suggest you use medium, short, or ultra short. The range suitable for your style of flying will be determined through experience. If you choose medium or long ranges then expect not to see the aircraft that are detected. This is because the signals will be coming from distant aircraft with very powerful transponders. The vertical separation of a bearingless target is much more accurate. The next tab allows you to set the vertical limit to which targets will be reported. 
we recommend 2,000 feet. In order to overcome the limitations of bearingless targets, Pilot Aware has developed Mode S3D. This development, unique to Pilot Aware, uses the atom stations to provide the GPS coordinates normally missing from a Mode S transmission. The advantage, of course, is that you have the ability to detect Mode S aircraft within the United Kingdom and Europe and plot them on a screen. So long as you are in range of an atom station that is being fed with MLAT data from 360 Radar Limited. The latest SkyGrid development will also increase the range in which you will be able to detect Mode S traffic. Before enabling Mode S 3D, it's recommended that you read the document on the Pilot Aware website, which explains how Mode S 3D works and its limitations. Pilot Aware will also give audio warnings, and you can select the audio warning zones from the drop down menu. The choices step down from 10 kilometers to 3 kilometers. Or you can turn off voice alerts entirely by selecting no zones. This configuration only affects pilot aware voice alerts and does not stop voice alerts coming from your electronic flight bag if they are provided by your supplier such as Sky Demon. The next two configurable items only apply if you are exporting data from pilot aware to other devices such as glass cockpits that cannot filter the data. These configurable items allow you to filter the data at source so that you can get the correct visualization on your external device. If you are not connecting to external devices, then select display all. Otherwise, this will affect the workings on the radar screen and your electronic flight back. If you do want to filter, then this first tab allows you to filter the horizontal sensitivity. Second filter allows you to choose the vertical sensitivity. But don't forget, if you're not using an external device like Dynon Skyview, choose all. This next tab is very important and selects the protocol that you are going to use to connect to your external flight bag. An external flight bag is a generic term for applications such as Easy VFR or SkyDemon. Each electronic flight bag has its own specific protocol that needs to be inserted here. For example, when using SkyDemon, it is very important that you use Pilot Aware UDP to ensure you don't get inter device lockouts. The next configurable tab determines the output volume that goes to your intercom or other device for the voice alerts. This ranges from 0 to 10 and the level you set depends on the input device into which you are providing the audio alert. The output from the Pilot Aware comes via a 3.5mm jack and the best devices into which to interface this are the intercom or your aviation frequency radio. It is also possible to cable direct to noise cancelling headsets or to traditional David Clark headsets although the latter will require a small amplifier in between. Many customers have used amplifiers such as this Neotech from Amazon. One of the very innovative things about Pilot Aware is that it can be connected to other devices such as Flam to give you Flam in and Flam out and greater interoperability. Or maybe you'd like to connect to a trig transponder or a funker transponder to allow you to have ADS-B out to increase your interoperability with other electronic conspicuity devices. And of course, you can connect to the excellent Aircrew electronic conspicuity screen. Connecting to other devices may need a different interconnect speed. This is also called a board rate. And in this second drop-down menu, you can actually choose the board rate for whichever device you are connecting to. The Profile tab provides a recorded list of all the configurations you have entered for different aircraft. Click the Profile tab and you will get a list of all the aircraft registrations that you have created profiles for and allow you to choose the profile for that aircraft before flight. 
Finally, when you've made all of your configuration choices, select Save and also refresh the page in the browser bar above. This will ensure that your configuration is saved for future use. And that's your configuration complete. There are lots more videos which will show you how to get the most out of Pilot Aware and an amazing amount of information on the knowledge pages on the Pilot Aware website that will tell you about the most interactive electronic conspicuity device available today. So that's all for this video. Please like and subscribe so that you get notified of all the new videos that we will be bringing out with all the new features of Pilot Aware. Whoops, I shouldn't have showed you that one. Something for the next release.